<sighs> What's up guys? Um, this week in medical school has been one of the most fulfilling weeks I've probably had in medical school. Um, so I have quite a bit to share with you guys. But before we get to all that, I've been trying this new morning strategy um, inspired, motivated by Dr. Hoverman um, from Stanford who essentially says if you can get the most out of the morning rays, it helps with a lot of things like the energy that you have throughout the day and you know the motivation that you have throughout the day and releasing all these biochemicals and all this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go through kind of a self experiment and it's been super easy because my mother and father-in-law have essentially come over regularly throughout the summer to turn our house into a home um, and our current patio is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna catch up on a few emails, maybe do a quick little phone Anki session, head to the clinic and then fill you guys in on this just incredible week. All right, see you guys. All right, guys, I have been super excited to share with you um, a couple of stories that I think have just made my entire medical school career in terms of just so much encouragement um, and feeling fulfilled with what I'm doing. And I was just, like super stoked to be able to talk to you guys about it. Um, I think there's two specific stories that both happened this week that just really kind of built me up and boosted my my energy with, with what I'm doing. So the first story was a um, middle-aged woman coming in, ear kind of, you know, deal. She was feeling some ear pain, uh, you know, went through differentials with infection and just TMJ dysfunction, all these other kind of things. Just, I was just doing my history and my physical. For those who aren't aware, as medical students, primarily we go in, we see a patient first, um, we do the preliminary kind of history physical, report those findings um, to our consultants or our residents or whatever the case may be. Then we come back in with the residents or the consultants, in this case the consultant, and the consultant will verify the history and physical um, and then you know discuss kind of plans moving forward. So as we're coming back in, the woman is on the phone, um, you know, she's fine. And um, you know, we've come to find out she's talking to her mother. So she goes, oh my goodness, mom, they're back. I'm gonna call you later, hangs the phone up, looks over to us and says, oh my goodness, you guys will not believe what's just, what just happened. I called my mom and I was just talking about the visit and I was mentioning how sweet the, this medical student was who was talking to me. And of course, at this, at this point, I'm like, oh my goodness, like a patient's complimenting me. This is like the best thing in the world. And then she goes and my mom replies, there was a medical student who I saw earlier that week named JR who was an absolute sweetheart. And so I was just like, oh my goodness. I saw this woman and her mother and they were talking about me on the phone about how they just felt cared for. And you know, I think that that makes me feel so encouraged because throughout the third year of medical school in particular, you go through this phase of just, I don't really know everything that's going on. I'm super stressed because I want to make sure I'm leaving a good impression on, you know, not only my patients, but on the residents and the faculty who are going to be assessing me and grading me. You know, everything is new. I'm going from service to service. I'm getting lost in the hospital. I don't know what's going on with this patients. I feel like I look like an idiot and all these kind of things add a lot of stress to the third year of medical school. But to be able to just have a patient, to have multiple patients feel like they were being cared for showed me that it's not really always just, you know, 
I worked this up to the specific diagnosis and we have the perfect treatment plan. But so much of the impact that you have on a patient is really just based on how they felt after they interacted with you. Did they feel cared for? Did they feel heard? And you know, I, that's one thing, that's the art of medicine. You know, it, it's not the science, it's not the book stuff, but uh, you know, this, the encouragement that I felt after that, that I had been performing the art of medicine appropriate enough for um, you know, this woman and her mother to both say these kind words to me, just really, I was like, okay, you know what, all the studying, I can do it, all of the hard work, the late nights, the late hours at the hospital, all of that kind of stuff, I can do it because I see that it is impacting somebody. For people who are in the struggles of first two years of medical school and you're like, what am I studying for? Just know that you will have multiple experiences like this. You know, people bless medical students all the time by sharing with them things like this. <laughs> what are you doing? Watching all my videos. <laughs> uh oh, tissue, tissue. Thank you. <laughs> are you spitting up, bro? <laughs> You tell them, Blaze. Um, story number two from this week. So um, I had another patient coming in. Um, this patient was coming in. They had some, you know, restless leg syndrome, and they had, um, you know, some just swelling in the legs. And um, you know, so basically, my physical exam is centered around the legs. Um, and you know, as they're kind of talking about the swelling that they've been having, of course, you know, the main things that we want to roll out when you see you know, especially bilateral leg swelling are, you know, is this related to heart, liver, kidneys, um, you know, because then you, it, it warrants further workup. In internal medicine, in the outpatient setting, um, a lot of the patients are older, um, 60 plus, and as we age, um, <laughs> you know, we can't really get blood from our ankles up back to our heart as well as we could before, um, so sometimes it just kind of pulls down there. So, you know, Worst case scenarios, that's usually what I want to rule out first. And then what is the most probable thing, just solely based off of incidents, what's most common is nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10, you probably what it's gonna be. So, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking this could just be some chronic venous insufficiency. So as I'm looking to see how severe the swelling is, basically by just seeing how far up it goes up the leg, um, I see just kind of this raised lesion um, on the leg and you know, I ask, hey, how long has this been here? And she goes, it's been there for, you know, about a year or so. You know, it doesn't hurt or itch or cause me any problems, so I haven't really worried about it. Um, so I kind of just like tag that, you know, in the back of my mind and, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get back to this. <laughs> you know, I wanna make sure we accomplish what you wanna accomplish here. But it just was something that had been concerning me. So I did the normal routine, went back, presented the history and the physical to the faculty that I'm working with. Um, but also mentioned like, hey, there's this also kind of thing on the, the, the leg there that I think, you know, warrants another set of eyes just to make sure it's all good. Um, so he's just like, sure, you know, good, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it. So when we get back in there and we kind of do the, the thorough, you know, plan for the two main things that this woman had come in for, you know, then we kind of finish by just, oh yeah, let me, you know, take a look at that leg for it. And once the provider takes a look at it and he sees kind of the lesion that I had noticed, he very calmly just goes, you know, I think you should just head over to Derm um, and just have him take it off, just, you know, just in case. And as we're leaving that patient visit and walking down the hallway back to my consultant's office, he looks at me and he says, you may have saved that woman's life. And again, this 
those kind of moments where you actually feel like what you're doing is meaningful and you're actually not just in the way as a medical student. I felt one of the first times that I actually added something of significant value to a patient encounter. Um, and you know, I think as medical students, we have the opportunity to kind of be much more thorough with the things that we do, with the exams that we do, with the histories that we take, you know, thinking more about like family history when sometimes, you know, people don't really care about that or social history. And, you know, we're just more thorough because we kind of are just, just learning the ropes. And so we kind of go through in a very systematic and thorough way. And that's not to say that residents and attendings don't do that. And it just really made me appreciate how important like truly being thorough is, um, you know, especially as medical students, we have so much time with the patients compared to the residents and the consultants who have so much more going on than we do. You know, that, you know, our histories can be a little longer, our physicals can be a little longer. It's still important to work on efficiency, you know, as you're going through this process. But, you know, if somebody is coming in for a specific thing, if you do a thorough exam, you can find things and you can do things and you realize different aspects of this person that you're trying to treat holistically you know, that, you know, may be related to that or may not be related to that, but you miss it if you come in narrow-minded only focusing on that chief complaint. Um, and I think that that was probably one of the first times that to that level of significance, you know, without somebody already establishing a diagnosis and me just kind of running a rep of just practice, talking to somebody about something that's already known or, you know, something like that, that I really felt like I played a meaningful role as a member of this person's healthcare team. I was super excited to be able to share that with you guys. Like this week, both of these kind of stories happened this week and really just encouraged me and made me feel like I'm doing good. Um, I hope that this was encouraging for you guys as uplifting for you as it was for me because this week was awesome. Next week is inpatient, so I'm sure it's gonna be also equally awesome. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of a rest, maybe finish up some of the Anki cards that I have, and then I have actually a meeting for an organization that I'm on the board of that I'm super excited to talk to you guys about. I guess this is just like an announcement kind of, maybe vlog, I don't know. But I'm super excited to talk to you guys about that too. And I want you guys to be able to follow that and stay in touch. We're gonna have you know an Instagram page running and we're gonna be talking to you guys about some stuff. So particularly for my folks who are interested in orthopedic surgery, just, I got you. So I'm gonna get ready for that meeting. I'll fill you guys in on that later. And I, I was gonna say I, I'm gonna nap or something, but I have this, so I guess I'll just drink coffee. All right, before I leave you guys um, in this video, I want to share just one last bit of exciting news. So I was just in a meeting um, with just some incredible people, and I am fortunate enough and privileged to be able to say that I am on the board of the SNMA Orthopedic Surgery Interest Group. I will be the public relations coordinator. So for people who are interested in orthopedic surgery, um, particularly for my underrepresented students out there, just know that we have some big things planned, tons of events, tons of kind of opportunities for you to get involved in the field of orthopedic surgery. And I am super excited because I get to kind of be the person who coordinates between the group and the public and kind of help to bring you guys some amazing content, some amazing events, some knowledge, some research opportunities, tons and tons of fun stuff. So if you guys are any in, any whatsoever interested in or the field of orthopedic surgery, just wanna learn more about it, make sure that you guys check out the SNMA Orthopedic Surgery Interest Group. I'll have more information in the link in the description below. You'll be able to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and you know we have a lot of fun things planned. So make sure you check us out. And I think with that, I am going to go to bed but of course, until the next one, keep evolving, and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, wait, 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 one last thing, one last thing, one last thing. Another thing that I'm doing, <laughs> I am actually coordinating this um, kind of opportunity 
for medical students who want to mentor pre-medical students to kind of have that opportunity. Um, and so if you are interested in being a mentor, if you are a medical student and you want to be able to have a mentorship opportunity where you can mentor pre-medical students, you know, not only does it look good on a resume, not only does, you know, you have good experience with mentorship and leadership qualities and all that kind of stuff, but you get to really impact a pre-med. Um, there's a huge gap between mentorship. The fellows have the attendings, residents have fellows, med students have everybody. But for some reason there's a gap with pre-meds. So we're gonna try to break that gap. So if you are interested in being a mentor to a pre-med who really needs you, um, also check out the link in the description below where you can kind of sign up to be a mentor in this community of mentors that I am currently working on. So I think with that, now I can formally say keep evolving <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one.